What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're gonna find out what collections are in Apex. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. Today, we are gonna go over collections in Apex. We'll figure out what they are, why they're important, when you should use them, and uh, we'll build an example together, of course, in Apex. But before we get into the rest of this video, make sure if you actually enjoy it, to like it. Because when you like these videos, it helps it get out to more people just like you that wanna learn this stuff for free. So if you enjoy it, like it. Now, let's get back to the content you came here for. First things first, what is a collection? Well, if you remember back in the variables video, you know, a few videos ago, if you've been watching this whole series in order, we went over how to create a variable and we created uh, a variable much like this one, number 12 or something. And right now what we have is a variable that can store a single value, that single value this time being the number 12, right? But what if we need a variable that can store a lot of variables in it, right? We need something a lot of the time when you're developing in any programming language, but of course Apex as well, that can store a bunch of variables in it so that we can essentially collect them all in one place and operate on all of those um, variables that we've stored in our collection. Well, that's where collections come in, right? In, in, in Apex, there are three collection types. Um, there is the list collection type, the map collection type, and the set collection type. And the next three videos after this one, we'll go over each one in great detail so you know when and why to use each particular one. But in this episode, we just want to go over how collections work and why uh, you should use them, right? So, okay, in the past, we have created variables that can store a single value in them, essentially, a single representation of the object type that you declare them as, in this case, an integer. And you can store a single integer, in this case, the number 12, in this variable. Now, if we wanted to say store in a single variable, the numbers zero through 12, right? we would need a collection. So let's create a collection together and we'll create a list of integers and we'll call this number list is equal to a new list of integers. And essentially what we've made right now with this list that I just declared here is a container for the collection of variables that we're gonna Put together right that we're gonna add to this list so this list or potentially a set or potentially a map again which we'll go over later is our container or our place where we will collect all of our variables that we want to to operate on to, to do something to so let's take a look at that right now this list is completely empty right again it's just a container there's nothing in it right now but we want to add something to it so we'll say numbers number list dot add number 12 like so right and now our list goes from having nothing in it to having the number 12 added to it and we can continue to add as many elements as we want to this list of integers we can just say uh, zero, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? I could do zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can also add a list of integers to this list. So if I already had another list that I was working with and I wanted to add all of those elements to this list, then I could do that. There's a function called add all here. So it would be number list dot add all and you can see from this method description here you can add a whole list to another list which is pretty cool so 
essentially what collections are, are a way to house a bunch of the same type of variable together, right? It could be an integer, it could be a case, it could be a contact, it could be a string, it could be a ton of different things um, in your org. But this list or these collection types are a way to store a bunch of those together in a container that will allow you to operate on them. Um, and when we go over for loops, uh, which are not too far away, you will see how incredibly important these lists are. As far as, you know, why they're important, when we get on the topic of bulkification of code, which is a huge one when you go out in interviews, people are gonna ask you about code, code bulkification. Um, you'll see that these lists, maps especially, um, come in a lot of handy there. Uh, when you're working in a trigger, you're always gonna be working with lists and maps. Um, so they're super important to leverage there as well to make sure that your trigger is bulkified, um, and as fast operating as it can be, right? All right, so hopefully this is giving you a general sense of what collections are and when you might use them. In the next few episodes, we're gonna go over everything you need to know about the three collection types in Apex. So, I hope to see you there. Mm -hmm.